Welcome to SAT TV News. I am Larry Larock, your presenter. In our top stories, redundancy process begins at Clare Harbor. U.S. Coast Guard repatriates 39 Cuban migrants. Venezuela condemns U.S. airspace ban on President Maduro. And in sports, Waki Rollers and Harlem United secure wins in Division I League. Details of these will follow. Welcome back. Today, Friday, 20th September, Junior Achievement Dominica formally accepted Scotiabank's computer donation as part of the organization contribution and continued support. Junior Achievement Program works with young individuals, teaching them to earn their economic success through promoting financial literacy, entrepreneurship, and work readiness. Ms. Evelyn Charles, champion of Bright Future for Dominica, says as part of their 25th anniversary celebrations, they found it fitting to partner with Junior Achievement Dominica to assist with educating students. And so today, we make our partnership visible by our donation of a laptop to be awarded to a deserving student affiliated with JA Dominica. We can say that this is the beginning of our relationship as we also pledge our support in kind by means of becoming involved in the mentorship aspect of this program. We take this opportunity to wish JA Dominica every success in its attempts to empower young persons in Dominica as we partner with you for the 2013-2014 academic school year and beyond. Recognizing the importance of positive influence in the lives of the youth, Scotiabank Dominica is delighted to make this presentation to JA Dominica today. Mrs. Natasha Eloy Labad, Executive Director of Junior Achievement Dominica, received the laptop on behalf of the deserving student. Mrs. Labad commended Scotiabank Dominica for their continued support and assured them that the computer will be put to great use. Thank you so very much to Scotiabank Dominica. On behalf of Junior Achievement, the executive directors, the students of Junior Achievement clubs throughout Dominica, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being part of the excitement Bringing the Junior Achievement experience to students, it's a very important commitment that Scotiabank Dominica is here today showing in all of its grandeur and splendor through giving this laptop through to students who are definitely going to benefit. Junior Achievement Dominica is committed to financial literacy, workforce readiness and entrepreneurship and I believe that this is a fantastic opportunity to expose students to the opportunities that are available to them. So once more, with all of the excitement, with all of the 25 years of experience that um, Scotiabank is now celebrating, I want to say once more thank you so very much. In other stories, Minister for Information, Telecommunications and Constituency Empowerment, 
Honorable Ambrose George, who represented Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt at the official commissioning of the Shawford Water Supply Project, says government has spent over $75 million over the past three years in water projects island-wide. This was all in the government's continued efforts to provide its citizens with the basic needs, he said. The government of Dominica, through the WASCO, along with several other partners, including the BNTF and the European Union, has invested well over $75 million in the water sector in Dominica over the past three years. And for a country of our size and population, that is in fact a, a tremendous feat. Some of these projects include the West Coast Water Supply Project, the Benz Water Supply, the Monbrose Storage Tank, the Concord Water Supply, the Delices Water Supply, the Warner Water Supply, the Grand Fund Water Supply, the Campbell Water Supply, the Pitted Savan Water Supply, and the Penville Water Supply. This list of areas, he explained, although not exhausted, shows the government continues to touch the lives of Dominicans. Further investment of several million dollars will be undertaken to improve the water supply to many communities island-wide over the next year. These will include water supply projects in Viecas, Bells, Savan in Scottsdale, and Union Estate in Point Michel. This clearly demonstrates government's commitment to not only achieve one of the major Millennium Develop Development Goals, which is to provide access to potable water for more than 50% of our population by the year 2015, but to surpass that target. It can be said that Dominica remains fortunate among other Caribbean islands to have been blessed with an abundance of fresh water resources. Therefore, we as a government have challenged ourselves to reach out much further than the demands of the Millennium Development Goal mentioned earlier. According to Mr. George, the government is committed to the provision of access to portable water to close to 100% of the population in the year 2015. However, he is of the view this can be achieved even before the stipulated time frame. This sector does not necessarily reward its investors financially. However, the government firmly continues its investments. He explained, if there was a charge for the development of water supplies in order to recoup expenses, the fees currently paid would be significantly higher. We also recognize the need for us to harness the potential of this resource, which God has blessed us with, to fuel or economic growth. It is for this reason, therefore, that the export of bulk water continues to be a major preoccupation of your government, and steps are already being taken in that direction through the Ministry of Trade and Invest Dominica Authority. We also welcome the private sector involvement in this area. The minister urged Dominicans, the beneficiaries of their investments, to appreciate the access of water to their homes as providing access to portable water remains a major challenge in many countries. In more news, the world can be filled with many malicious people. However, one individual pushed the envelope when a mentally challenged man was physically attacked. The police department is employing the cooperation of the general public investigations surrounding a report of grievous bodily harm on a mentally challenged young man of Portsmouth. Darius Ducre, a known psychiatric patient, is continuous in injuries at the Portsmouth Hospital. Reports are that hot oil was thrown on Mr. Ducre by a family member for sleeping under their house. Police Public Relations Officer Inspector John Carbon said a report was made on behalf of Mr. Ducre but so far, no medical official have confirmed whether or not hot oil was used to injure him. However, 
the police are still continuing their investigations as to what actually transpired. They have spoken to a female relative in relation to the matter. However, there is no evidence to indicate this person inflicted the injury. Mr. Carbon further confirmed that so far a woman had been interrogated, but no arrests have been made by the police. Anyone with information on this matter is asked to call the nearest police station or the police hint line at 1-800-4468 or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477. In more news, what would normally be cubicles full of Dominica customer service agents delivering what some say is excellent customer service was left empty as the redundancy process was well on its way on Friday, September 20th at Dominica's call center, Clare Harbor. This was following a press conference on August 21st when the management of Clare Harbor announced that 243 employees would be made redundant effective September 21st. Our employees did not create the situation, and so I won't, I won't state that our employees created the situation in any way, shape, or form. Um, our client loved Dominica. It loved our passionate employees, thought they were fabulous, and this is not any way, shape, or form anything to do with our employees. It was a business decision. Upon arrival to the compound, it was observed that many employees had already vacated the premises after returning their entry keys. In an exclusive interview with SAT TV, General Manager of Clare Harbor, Ms. Mary Quinones stated, calls for agents had ceased effective the night of Thursday, September 19th, in order to allow them to hold discussions with the employees made redundant. Our intention is that we will have this business back by the end of, you know, when we announced before we talked about June of next year or the end of second quarter next year that we would be fully back in, in business again. At this point, we're hopeful that it's much quicker than that with the current negotiations that are going on. I can't release any names of companies yet, but things are going very well. We have a very important site visit coming up in a couple weeks. And... Um, we are, are really looking forward to getting these guys back to work as soon as possible. And that's what we're trying to instill with them when they leave. We didn't want them to spend their last minutes on the phones and not get to hear from me. So I'm meeting with every employee today, telling them what's happening, where we're at as a business, and we'll call you as soon as possible. And they're all getting paid like they work today and tomorrow. So they're getting, getting their regular payroll for the time. And Negotiations are on the way with two clients, one who will provide the opportunity for 300 jobs, while the other will provide 200, opening the window for over 500 jobs at the call center by June 2014. Once negotiations with the new clients have been finalized, Clare Harbor will begin rehiring employees who were made redundant. In responding to the issue of alleged threats made to the management of the company as a result of the redundancies, Ms. Quinones explained she is not worried about the equipment or the building, but her staff as they cannot be replaced. There have been rumors that have made us concerned about the well-being and safety of all of our employees, our current employees and the ones we're making redundant. And the officers are here today to ensure the safety and well-being of our employees, period. Mm -hmm. and that. Because that's our responsibility mm -hmm. um, is to, you, you can't take things lightly. Too many things happen in the world. And yes, I do realize that sometimes, you know, you know, people say things that they don't really mean, but you never know when someone's serious and, and, and our employees are too important to us to, to have something happen. So we, we took those precautions. It has nothing to do with if, I, if we lose equipment, I don't care because I have insurance. I'm concerned of losing an employee. The manager highlighted that they have made provisions for training classes for all interested redundant employees in areas included but are not limited to Spanish, French, customer service, Microsoft Word and Excel, and sales. Classes begin October 1st and will run into December. Most of the individuals made redundant have already signed up. There will also be a pilot program during the month of October where 100 employees have already been selected to participate. The program is expected to expand, provided its continued success. In other news, seven individuals were awarded on the night of Thursday, September 19th at a dinner and awards ceremony 
in recognition of volunteer facilitators to the Adult Education Division under the Ministry of Social Services, Community Development and Gender Affairs. Martha Andre, Adult Education Officer, during her welcome remarks told the participants that we are agents of change and we need to portray this within our communities. We cannot afford to just sit back and see things go on and like our old palance, so it is. We must now put a, a foot forward and try to aid in the development of our communities and our people. In the saying of Mother Teresa, we ourselves feel what we are doing is just a drop in the ocean. But the ocean would be less because of that missing drop. And I want you to consider that little um, quote. That means that every contribution that's made is a meaningful contribution. And it does add it to development. Andre said, when we give our contribution and time, we are aiding in our own development as well as our national development. According to Social Services, Community Development and Gender Affairs Minister, Honorable Gloria Schillingford, the recruitment of facilitators is not an easy task. And so the ministry is sincerely grateful to those of you who continue to willingly make your services available for the continuity of the adult education programs. So many persons nowadays don't have time. So sometimes when you ask the question, can you help? I don't have the time. So hats off to you this evening. In fact, your services are critical to the success of the division's programming, programming. for without you, it would be quite impossible to implement the number of programs that we do see and those that offer limited but human and help with your, um, the financial resources. The minister informed the facilitators the work which they have conducted within the classrooms does not remain there. The knowledge and skills they have passed on to the students is the push she believes is needed for the students to become employable. Your efforts should not go unrecognized, nor should they appear to be unappreciated. Thus, it is with this in mind that this small ceremony, but important ceremony, has been organized to show you that we value the contributions which through this selfless service, you are making towards national development. Always remember a country's human capital is its greatest resource. Mrs. Schillingford said that their selection informs the entire country that they have contributed beyond measure. The awardees include Helen Sabin, Philbert Joseph, Claudia Tuse, Kirk Edwards, Daniel Coffey, Aisha Richards, and Lufa Martin. Mr. Martin received a special award for his long dedicated service as a facilitator with the Adult Education Division. In Dominica. Thank you.
Billy Cates. Thank you very much. What you just heard was a clip from recording artist Colonel Stevens, also known as Mr. Guada, with his new song entitled Hollywood, which sheds light on the porn epidemic currently faced in Dominica. In an exclusive interview with Sat TV, Mr. Guada said the idea for the song came to mind early this year when a number of pornographic videos of Dominicans were made public. It's a sad, it's a sad state, you know, because when I think of it, it's like, I have to ask myself, um, what caused these um, ladies? Um, well, I'm speaking about those that actually voluntarily went into that situation because there are different situations with the, with the, with the porn videos, which we must admit. There are those, and I want to make this clear, there are those where, where you have the guys taking advantage of the girls some of the girls they are not even aware of the um, session, the sexual session being recorded. All right, let's put it aside. Now, there is the next pretty comment where you have the girls thinking that when they do them videos, it come about like a publicity stunt, and then they forgot everybody talking about them, which we, which I think they, they in the mind they're crazy. Mr. Guada, who is a father says it is very sad to see our young girls engage in such explicit acts for publicity. I want people to take this song serious and not view it as a song to promote pornography. All of my songs are geared at uplifting the youth and my country, the recording artist stated. The song is aimed at making the young ladies sit back and ponder on what they are actually doing so they will make more responsible decisions. When a young girl that goes to school or even a, 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 a young lady that's a professional maybe a teacher let's just say a lady that is a teacher you know goes about and does those things now you or, or, or let's say me as a father after i see a young lady like that in that kind of a situation i don't want that kind of lady teaching my child now, that lady also can never find it comfortable walking in the public with her head, head high. So, them things come in with repercussions, as I said, and consequences. So, you know, so it's just, that song is really, you know, in a little circle, just saying, just telling the young ladies to be more responsible, be more responsible of their actions. The song was written and recorded in June of this year and was to be released in October. But with the circulation of a number of new pornographic videos, the release date was pushed forward. Although skeptical about releasing the song, which may be viewed as controversial, the recording artist is of the view that this pornographic epidemic cannot be swept under the table like it does not exist. Mr. Guada is urging the legislators to ensure they can work on enacting laws which will deter individuals from spreading these videos, and if they do, will be imprisoned or slapped with heavy fines. We now go to Shana with court news. In court matters, the magistrate court has granted an order to allow law enforcement officers to seize 13,760 euros from two Venezuelan nationals. This is the first civil cash recovery under the proceeds of the Crime Amendment Act 7 of 2013. The act allows customs and police officers the authority to detain assets which they believe are from proceeds of crime. Reports are that Jenny Delval Rodriguez and Edgar Fabian Ferrano Ocaris were apprehended with the money upon departure at the Melville Hall Airport on September 4, 2013. Officers of the Financial Intelligence Unit made an application for forfeiture at the Magistrate Court on Wednesday, September 18th, which was later granted. 
Mr. Rodriguez and Mr. Okaris have 30 days to appeal the decision of the magistrate. However, if they fail to appeal, the money will be transferred to the asset for forfeiture fund. The asset in the forfeiture fund is used to assist law enforcement for rehabilitation purposes as well as to play law enforcement agencies abroad with the inclusion of Dominica. 10% of the said amount will go to the consolidated fund. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights. SAT TV News once again has taken you to the streets to find out the people's view on various topics. This week we've chosen pornography. And there's a lot of pornography videos that's been circulating and a lot of our youth, mainly the women, are the ones involved. What would be your views on that and what would be your advice to them? Well, I don't think I can give them any more advice than they've gotten before. But what I can actually say on this is I think it's time we as a society, government, the authorities, should strengthen legislation because it appears that laws as it pertains to pornography is very archaic and we need to you know, be on the front burner at this point to strengthen the legislation to punish those who are responsible for circulating such videos. Well, personally, when it comes to pornography in Dominica, right now, I think um, the people who, who have those stuff on their phones and, and whatever devices they have it on, I think they're not being responsible enough. And one of the things that I understood was a lot of persons who their pornographic material went out viral. Um, the only place that they, 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 they brought their phones was phone shack. There's a lot of pornography that's been circulating over the past week and a lot of our females are involved in this. So what's your views on that and what would be your message to them? Okay, um, well I think to me it's like some sort of revenge because everything came out at once. And I really think it's really bad for the for Dominica that those things have to be spreading all over the place. And for your women, I mean, it's very disrespectful. And I would do something. I would surely take action. You see, and nothing is being done. So everybody's taking it lightly, and they just keep spreading, spreading, spreading this kind of thing. So I think somebody should actually come forward and do something. To be honest, I think that what what our young people, especially the young women, should do. If you, your partner or whoever you interfere with decides to do a video with you and them, I think you can watch it after you're done, then delete it. Because what is happening now is sad. Very, very sad. That's, that's what I have to say. What would be your views to these young people involved in these videos? Well, my, my personal advice to them is it, it, don't, it don't work the embarrassment. It, it does not make sense. If someone says he loves you and he has to film you while you know in your privacy in your, in your sexual activity and you know you have to bear in mind that someday you may fall out and it may just you know and that may be the opportunity to send it out um, and for those who who are circulating these things it really it really is really could be your brother your sister tomorrow i think um this invasion of privacy um, i think it's very wicked of those things looking at the videos and they should have a conscience to think about how a person is going to and how it might affect them in life. We can make an example of somebody because as a young woman it's very shameful. Remember this? 2012, your Kadas King, where this year, second edition, 2013, it will be at Newtown Savannah, October 19th. Be there, I'll be there, and I won't be too to me. Guess who will be? <laughs> See you there.